Hey guys, we'll be talking about the best dash cams of 2022. So without delay, we'll jump straight into the video. Also, the links to the reviewed products are mentioned down in the description box. If you're looking for a dash cam that's relatively simple to set up, the Nexar Beam is a very solid choice. It's keenly priced too, and has the added benefit of being able to keep all your video clips stored in the cloud without charge. In terms of specs, the Nexar Beam also features a very respectable range of features and functions. It'll capture 1080p Full HD video, while the GPS functionality adds a little more meat on the bones of this compact camera. There's a 135 degree field of view from the lens, plus plenty of cable, and all the fixtures and fittings needed to get up and running. Better still, Nexar knows a thing or two about dash cams, so getting yourself kitted out with one of these means you'll be getting access to a well-known proven recording format that shouldn't let you down. With more of us opting to have an onboard video recording in the car, the Nexar Beam makes a great entry-level model to go for. Of course, Nexar has more advanced models to head for if you need extra recording muscle, like the Nexar Pro Dash Cam we've also looked at recently. Rove R3 offers three cameras that simultaneously record your vehicle's front, cabin, and rear at a resolution of 1440p, 1080p, 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 respectively. The front camera's lens is 150 degrees wide, while the rear and cabin camera comes with 140 degrees wide lenses, providing the best in industry video clarity and quality. Moreover, the cabin camera has four hidden IR LEDs to capture more precise footage in low light conditions. R3 is a perfect dashboard camera for rideshare drivers such as Uber, Lyft, and Taxi, who want an all around protection of their cars for liability reasons. Rove R3 comes with 3 inch IPS touchscreen and a single power restart button to eliminate your effort of pressing buttons. The touch of your fingertips does all the magic. R3 is loaded with all the essential features for road safety, such as built in GPS, G sensor, loop cycle recording, emergency video lock, parking mode, time lapse, external storage supporting up to 250 gigabytes, Class 10 U3 speed micro SD card, memory card not included, and many more. If you want the smallest and more discreet dash cam on the market, then the Garmin Dash Cam Mini 2 is for you. Barely the size of a key fob, the Mini 2 foregoes features like a touchscreen display in favor of being so small it hides neatly behind your car's rearview mirror. Despite its compact size, the Dash Cam Mini 2 records in full HD at 30 frames per second through a 140 degree lens. This puts it a little behind other larger members of the Garmin Dash Cam family, which shoot at 1440p through wider, 180 degree lenses. But we feel 1080p is still good enough for dash cam, especially one that is this compact and competitively priced. Sticking with design for now, the Dash Cam Mini 2 is remarkably compact. The front houses nothing more than the lens and a ball and socket joint, which connects to a short arm. This then has an adhesive pad for sticking to the widescreen. We're big fans of the magnetic mounts of other Garmin dash cams, but the compact plastic arm here still takes up very little widescreen space and works well. Given how small the Mini 2 is, we suspect most buyers will leave it permanently in place and only remove it by popping the ball and socket joint apart when they want to move the camera to another car or access the micro SD card. Overall, we were quite impressed with the Rexing V1 in our testing. It can produce high quality video, has a slim profile, and isn't too expensive. However, we found the equally slim AUK DR02 to be a bit more user friendly and it produces just as high quality video. Therefore, for most people, we think the AUK key would be a better choice. However, the Rexing V1 does have built in Wi Fi, a feature the AU key lacks. So, if you're jonesing for the ability to wirelessly send video clips from your camera to your phone, this is a great choice. The Rexing V1 is a great overall camera, but it faces some stiff competition. Bolstered by great video quality but held back by a less than ideal user interface, this cam ended up close to the bottom of the pack once all of our tests were said and done. The video quality is very crisp. In fact, in our testing, we thought its video looked noticeably clearer than the videos from other cameras sporting the same 1080p resolution. The wide 170 degree field of view provides a large area of coverage without any distortion or blurring around the edges. Both day and night, we were able to easily identify other cars' license plates in many different lighting conditions. At $279.99, the Blackview DR750X 1CH Plus 
is priced like a premium dash cam, but works more like a mid-range model. It supports smartphone and cloud connectivity, includes a 32GB memory card for local storage, and can run while your car is off to keep an eye on it while parked. Its unobtrusive design saves space on your window, but it lacks a display, so you'll need to use a smartphone app to see through its lens. We're a bit disappointed by the video it captures, which puts preference on a quick 60 frames per second capture rate over resolution. And the DR750X1CH Plus costs even more if you add accessories and options, such as LTE connectivity, which is a lot to ask for a dash cam with so so video. You're better off with our editor's choice winner, the Garmin Dashcam 66W, which offers more features for $250 while the $90 PapaGo Go Safe 535 is a good alternative if you're on a budget. One advantage of the Blackview DR750X 1CH Plus is that it's small and easily blends into your vehicle when mounted near the rear view mirror. But because the 12 volt power core connector is on the inside section of the unit, it can be difficult to access no matter which side of the mirror it's mounted on. The DRV N520 automatically records as you drive along like all dash cams, and the image is quite clear and looks pretty good on your car's head unit screen. You can easily replay recorded vision on the Kenwood head unit in the car for quite a few trips back. You can easily replay recorded vision on the Kenwood head unit in the car for quite a few trips back or even while you are driving. Parking mode means it starts recording if the car is bumped. How badly bumped? Well, it is supposed to work if someone backs into your car, which I fortunately haven't tested yet, but I can confirm that washing the car will trigger it. You will get a message on the car's head unit screen on the next car startup if there is a video triggered by the car being bumped, and the videos are very easy to find in the camera menu, sorted and labeled by date and time. A nice feature. The advanced driver assistance system might be why you spend the dollars on this to go with your nice new Kenwood head unit. It does three things, lane guidance, forward collision alert, and departure alerts. So how well do they work? Well, never as well as a driver assistance system actually designed for and built into a car by the car manufacturer, of course. Before getting into these features, I will also confess none of my cars are new enough to have built-in driver assist features, so I don't know how this performs in comparison or if they are always annoying regardless of vehicle. So that's all for today's video, guys. Let's get together again with another video next time. Until then.